All right, y'all, I'm super excited about today's video. Today we're going to be talking about thermostats, and these work on baseboard heaters. Sometimes they're mounted on the baseboard heater, or sometimes they're mounted on the wall. This also works for other type of heaters, um, forced air heaters, ceiling heaters, all kinds of floor heating. There are many applications that these types of thermostats work for, and today we're going to be talking about the 240 volt versions. Although everything that you're going to be learning can be applied both ways and you really, in order to be well-rounded, should learn about both. So um, there's an option with these thermostats where you can break 120 volts or you can break 240 volts. Now let me say this, if your heater is only 120 volts, then you only need to break 120 volts. That makes sense, doesn't it? But if your heater is 240 volts, you may be asked by the supply house or wherever you're buying it or looking online, hey, do I need to break on my 240 volts? Do I need to break 120 or do I need to break 240? Now let's talk about it now. Let's go ahead and take a look at this here. We're talking about the thermostat. If you've noticed it here on this model, it's actually mounted to the device and it's this little turn dial right here. With, with the circuit de-energized, if you removed that screw right there, you're actually going to pull off a, a whole apparatus that looks like this. Let me get my pointer out here and I'll start over on the device itself. So if you look right here, this just clips in and it coincides with this. It just clips right in there. And then if you look down here, that's the screw hole down there. And this whole apparatus actually comes off. It's pretty neat. Now let's go ahead and look at it if you were to take it apart. It's a pretty simple setup and you have the thermostat here which goes through the hole and the button actually is applied from the outside and that's how it holds it on there. Okay, and some of them have screws where you screw them into. So with that being said, it's a pretty simple setup. Let's go ahead and look at the thermostats themselves now. Now this one is a single pole thermostat and this is gonna be one that only breaks 120 volts. Now if you have a 120 volt heater, that's all you need to break and that's okay according to your manufacturer specifications. I, I do wanna warn you guys to never repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes only. All right, so with that being said, this is a single pole thermostat. And the easiest way to tell is there's only a single set of wires. Think about it like a normal switch. The hot comes in to one of these legs, and then we put the load side to this uh, leg. And when you work the thermostat, it either opens or closes the circuit. Just like a normal switch, you flick it on and off. Now let's look at this. This is a double pole thermostat. And how you can tell is it has two sets of wires. So you're going to be breaking two hots. So you'd hook your red hot and your uh, black hot to this side. And the thermostat's going to be the switch controlled by temperature. And then, then it's going to allow the, the red current to flow out on this one and the black current to flow on that one. Pretty simple setup here. But now let's talk about the reasons that you need to make sure that you are getting a two-pole thermostat when you're dealing with 240-volt heaters. Let's talk about this now. All right, so here's our heater again, and let's imagine that we just installed our wire. We pulled over a piece of 10-2 with ground. We have 240 volts present at the thermostat, and we get to wiring this thing. And let's imagine we just hooked up one of these, one of these thermo the single pole thermostats that only break 110 volts. And one thing I want you to note here is there is no typically no positive off. Okay, there's just a low setting. We're going to talk about the dangers for that here in just a second. And let's imagine you turned it down past the temperature setting down to low, and it was warm enough in the room that it did shut off. You're still going to have 120 volts standing on the heater coil, depending on how yours is set up. But what's going to happen is let's imagine the black leg is the one that's connected to the switch, our thermostat switch, and you turn it to where it shuts off. That's going to shut that black leg off from flowing, and it's going to stop right here at the thermostat. But we've hooked this red leg to the other side of the coil, and it's still going to allow 120 volts of potential. Now, is there any touch potential? I would never recommend touching it and finding out. Could you potentially shove something in here that's metal and ground it out on the grounded frame and trip the breaker, maybe throw some sparks, maybe shock or electrocute somebody? Now, I want you to think about something else. Typically on these thermostats, the 110 volt ones, there's not a positive off button, okay, an off dial. You just drop below the desired thermostat temperature and it shuts off. Well, if there is no positive off 
at some point, this thermostat, when it gets cold enough, it's going to turn on. And if it's in the middle of summer, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not going to turn on. And, you know, you may carelessly set some things in front of it, some boxes and bags and magazines or hang some coats nearby or move something in front of it. Well, let's say you're, you know, not paying attention in a room that you're not in very often. You think the heater's off. Well, it drops below a certain setting. It's only breaking 110. And let's imagine it doesn't have a positive off and it accidentally turns on. So that's something else that we want to think about here, okay? Every model is going to be different. Some of them may have a positive off. I don't know every model, but let's just, let's go through this scenario together. Now let's look at this same scenario and imagine that we installed a 240 volt thermostat. So we took this same heater, we ran our same wire over there. We installed our 240 volt thermostat. We're going to hook the black leg to the black wire on the line side, the red leg to the red wire on the line side. And the thermostat's going to act as our switch. But the biggest thing that we gain with these is we gain, in most models, you're going to have a positive off. They are guaranteeing that it is off, you know, if the device is functioning properly. And what that actually does for us is that allows us to know that we have no current flowing through the device, for one, and for two, that the current stops at the thermostat. I have a positive off. It doesn't matter how cold it gets in this room. It's never going to turn off. And I have a positive off and I've broke both of these legs. So this is just something that I want you to think about. Now, if you only have a 110 volt heater, I want to give you this warning as well. You do not need, according to your manufacturer specifications, you do not need a double pole. You do not want to break the neutral. That's unnecessary. You do not need to break the neutral on a 110 volt heater. So you would not hook one side to the, uh, you know, the hot and the other side to the neutral and hook that up unless your manufacturer, you know, calls for it. But this is just some stuff that I wanted you guys to learn about in order to be well-rounded. I'm glad that we got to get together today. If